Good evening guys, Daniel here, Tennessee fly angler with Edwards Fly Fishing. I'm going to tie for y'all one of my all-time favorite streamer patterns. It's called the guacamole stick. Um, it's traditionally tied here in Tennessee, Middle Tennessee pattern here. Uh, I've seen it as small as 14 all the way up to size 6. Uh, this here is a size 10, two extra long. It's a Daiichi is what we've got in the vise with the appropriate size bead in gold. You can use brass. I've even used tungsten before if you want to get a little bit more weight on there. But this fly was originally tied by a guy named Chuck Robinson. He owned a fly shop in Brentwood called the Fly Chucker. And uh, it's, it's, it's a phenomenal fly. Um, you can fish this alongside of a buddy. It's got an olive woolly bugger. And uh, you will catch two to one, if not three to one. I've seen it happen. Anyway, let's get started here. We're going to do a couple of wraps of lead wire. You can use 0 .20, 0 .15, just whatever size you use. You just want the lead wire to end roughly about the halfway point on the hook shank. It's a little short, man. Just a little bit more. Because this is just a gold bead. It ain't tungsten, so I, I don't. I need to make sure I get enough weight on here. looks better. Now, let me start with our tying thread. We've got a bobbin loaded up here. It's UTC 140 denier in fluorescent green or chartreuse. I like to start right behind the lead wraps. Wrap into the lead wraps some. Binding them down really good and then stopping the thread right at, there's my scissors, right at the bend of the hook. Now we're going to tie in the tail. The tail, like any woolly bugger, uh, this is a variant of a woolly bugger basically, um, kind of a mixture of it and a crackleback, but anyway, use marabou. Here we have a marabou blood quill, single piece, right from the strong section from our neighborhood friendly Bass Pro Shops in Nashville. Um, I like to trim my marabou. I'm very picky about my tails here. So what I'm going to do, because I don't like extremely fluffy tails on a, on a woolly bugger, I take the center of the marabou, and that's the first thing I'm going to do is pluck out the very center point. It don't take much away when you comb it back down. You can notice there's a nice little V cut out of there, and when you close it up, this makes it a little bit more natural and it's not as poofy. Um, also, on a lot of marabou, if you look at it, the very tips of it are extremely stringy. Let me get this together so you can see. They're very stringy. What we're trying to do here, or what my goal is, to have the fluffy this part of the marabou, which is about an inch to an inch and a half down from the tips of those really stringy fibers as you start the webbing. So I'm going to grab these, pull to about this point, I'm going to take the back side of these scissors here and I'm going to rip off those stringy portions of the tips and I will be now left <laughs> with a nice fluffy marabou. Now, I like to wet my marabou before working with it. This makes it a heck of a lot easier to use and to work around. I like my tail to be approximately the length of the sh between the shank and the whole hook itself. I'm going to tie that in right there, right where we left off. It likes to roll on you like any marabou. Get a couple of wraps on there and then you're going to cut it loose. Your goal is your gap here between your tying your marabou in to where your lead wire stopped. You want to fill that gap with that marabou to make a nice uniform even body. Anyway, you can advance your thread all the way back to behind the bead. Now we're going to tie in some floss. This is Danville's four strand floss in chartreuse. Uh, you don't have to use the floss. I like to because it saves on tying thread. Uh, you can actually spin the bobbin counterclockwise, flatten the thread out and do it that way. It just takes a lot longer and you use up a lot of tying thread that way. So hence why I use the floss. 
You tie that in right behind the bead with a pinch wrap. Now I'm going to secure this down all the way to the base of the tail. And advance my thread and open spiral wraps back up to the bead. Stick this on the bobbin holder to get it out of the way. Then you can cut loose your tag in. Now, you will then take your floss, try not to get too far into the tail there, and you're going to wrap. I have this in a material bobbin. You can do this by hand, but a material bobbin makes it just so much easier. And this four strand floss lays out flat and even and thin. And the goal is on this guacamole stick, hence a stick, it's not like got a chenille like a woolly bugger, it needs to be a really thin fly. Go right to behind the bead, and then you will. I do a couple of turns around, tie it off, and then you can cut her loose. Being careful not to cut loose your tying thread. <coughs> now, this floss is rather stringy, so if you have a, well, as you can see, that it's almost the size of a hair, it's extremely small. A strand or two, just clean that off. Now, now here's the kicker. We're going to tie in a piece of peacock curl. Best way to do this, guys, is to fold it over. Just pinch it the center, fold it over and grab. Lay it directly on top and tie it in right behind the bead with a pinch wrap. And just let it hang out there for a minute. Then you're going to tie in some hackle. Like any hackle, like on a dry fly, this is just woolly bugger hackle from Bass Pro. You can use saddle hackle. Uh, whiting makes a great woolly bugger hackle. But uh, give you a stem to tie onto, pluck off the bottom, and a couple extras off the top. Leaving a bit more off the top of the shiny side facing towards you. You want a little bit more off the top to help, in or help, the, uh, help the wrap orientate correctly. One tie that in at the point. Now, what I'd like to do at this point is go ahead and advance my thread back through the hackle, or past the hackle, excuse me, and the peacock curl to the base of the tail. At this point, I can go ahead and cut loose to the tag end on the peacock curl and on the saddle hackle. Now, you can fold the hackle out of the way, just like you're doing a crackle back. You lay the, the peacock curl straight across your body of the fly and do one, two wraps to secure that really nice and just let this hang out. Don't do nothing with this. Don't trim this tag in. That's gonna form part of the tail. Now we can go ahead and wrap our hackle. I like to do one solid turn right at the bead, then I advance in an open spiral going back towards the tail. You can use hackle pliers if you like. These strands are actually uh, long enough for me to work with and not have to use them. Go ahead and tie that off right here, winding your tying thread through the hackle. Reach in with your, the fine point of your tying scissors and cut the hackle tip free. Go ahead and take your peacock curl, pull back and cut just slightly past the marabou. At this point you will wind your tying thread back through the hackle fibers. Being careful not to trap them, what this acts is as a counter wrap to ensure that the hackle does not come unraveled with these toothy little stocky rainbows and browns and even a couple of brookies. Now, at this point you can whip finish this fly. Four or five turns is really all you need. Give it a good cinch down and cut her loose. Then you can apply your favorite head cement, UV. I like good old Sally Hansen's just a drop there right on top. And there you go, guys. That is
a Middle Tennessee traditional fly called the guacamole stick. You can this works very well with the four weight rod, six and a half to eight and a half feet in these streams. Um, I've thrown it on a six weight. I have a friend that likes to throw it on a two weight, oddly enough, and we've all succeeded on this fly. Went out a couple of uh, months ago and me and three other guys put up uh, 89 trout in the net in three days. So um, there you go. A good middle Tennessee pattern for you. The guacamole stick bug. Hope you all have a good evening.